Dealing with the standard CLI archive utilities on Linux directly can be a little bit overwhelming, especially when most things you're going to be working with will be tar or some variation of tar. So it'll be tar with GZ compression or tar with BZ2 compression. And the problem with working with tar is that every single variation you're going to look at has a completely different set of options you need to use and you're not going to be able to guess the options you're going to either have to go read the man page every time or go use stack overflow but what we're going to be looking at today is an application called archiver that just abstracts away all that complexity and all you need to do is just run the program now do keep in mind that it doesn't support every single format under the sun but it does support every single tar format. It supports zip, it supports RAR, and a bunch of others as well. But those ones I'd listed out will cover 99% of use cases on Linux. Most of the time, you won't even see RAR. Rarely, you'll see zip, but most of the time, zip is going to be from things like GitHub. Now, I don't have an archive prepared, so first up, let's go and make one. So what we need to do is run the arc command. It's arc, not archiver, which does make it much easier to write. And the sub command we're going to include is the archive command. So from here, what we need to do is include the name of the output file. So it uses this to determine what it's actually going to be using to do the archiving itself. So let's say we want to make a zip. So we're just going to call this test.zip and then we just pass in the input files we want to use. So let's say test file and let's also include this test repo as well. So test repo and then if we just go and press enter, it's going to make the archive. Now it doesn't give us any output just like any good Unix application should. So if we just go into LF right here, if we go down to test.zip, as we're going to see, we have all of the files from the test repo, and we also have the test file in there as well. Now we can also go use this to make other formats as well. So instead of doing test.zip, let's instead this time do a tar, and then also let's do a tar dot, I don't know, dot gz for example. And let's go into here and then go down to our test stuff that we had before. Uh, a bit further down, so we have the test.tar has all of the same stuff in it, and then test.tar.gz, exactly the same. Now, there is a full list of what's supported inside of the doc, so if we go arc-h, there isn't actually a man page for this, and then we scroll up a bit, we'll see these are the formats that are supported. So, we could do zip, tar, tar br, tar gz, all of these ones. In the case of ra, it does only let you open them, you can't actually compress them with this application. Now, if for whatever reason you need to be absolutely certain about the type of archive being made, what you can do is include the archive type as a separate option. So what we do for that is arc dash dash ext, so extension equals, let's say tar, for example. And once again, we're going to make an archive, if I spell archive correctly. And we still do need to include the actual extension type here in the output file name. I would like to have the option to neglect the extension type because we are specifying it over here. So let's once again go and pass in the test file. So this one right here and then go and run this. And if we go into LF again and go down to test.tar, as we'll see, we have the exact same file in here we had before. So I think really the only reason you might want to do this is let's say you're running this inside of a script and you want to go and make a bunch of archives from some files. What you can do is if you don't specify the extension here, it is going to error out. So if there's for whatever reason you need to like error check it or something, that I guess is a use case for it. Now that we've got some archives to mess around with, let's go and unarchive them. So the way we do this is fairly straightforward. What we do is arc unarchive and then pass in the file we want to unarchive. So let's say the test.tar and we can optionally pass in an output directory as well. Now I am going to do this because if I don't then the files that were put into this archive are already going to be in the directory I'm in and I don't think we'll unarchive them properly. So if we then go and run this and then go into the output directory and we run ls as we can see we have the file and let's just go and check the file to make sure the data is still in here. Yep, this is some data in a file. Worked perfectly fine. Now, I don't think I need to explain how this works for other input types. Just pass in the input file and it will do the exact same thing. So instead of having to mess around with tar and work out what options you need to use, you just pass it in and it magically does everything for you. Typically, you don't see raw files on Linux, but if you do, and if it happens to be a password protected raw file, 
I don't particularly like how it handles it, but this is how it does it. So if you want to go and do the exact same thing on a password protected RAR, all you need to do is before running this command here, go set environment variables. So in something like your bash RC or your ZSH env, wherever it is that you go and set environment variables, you want to go and set the archive underscore password, and then you just write the password right here. This is what I mean by I don't particularly like it because you just write this password in plain text, but it is just a password to a RAR, so probably isn't that bad. Now we don't need to unarchive every single file in the archive, we can just extract out a single file. However, to do this, we do need to know the path to the file inside of the archive, but luckily there is another command we can go and use inside of arc to go and do this. So what we're going to do is run the arc ls command, and like the ls for your regular system, this will just list out the file information. So let's go and do this on the test.zip, and as we can see we have the read write privileges, the creation date, but the only one we actually care about here is the path on the right hand side. So in this case we have test slash test file and all we need to do now, first I'm going to show you that the output directory is going to be empty. What we need to do is run arc extract and then pass in the input file. So in this case the input file is the test.zip and then we need to pass in the path to the file inside of the archive. So in this case it is test slash test file. And then from here, we can pass in the output directory. So once again, that's going to be output. And let's cd into output. And if we go into lf, as you can see, we have a folder here. So test, test file, test, and then test file. I have no idea why it's created this many subfolders in here, but the file is actually here. And the ls command does behave consistently regardless of what you're actually using. So if you go and do the exact same thing, so arc ls, but this time do it on the uh, test.tab. Uh, GZ was it? As we can see, the output looks exactly the same. Now typically when I'm working with something like this, I usually want to use it because I want to bundle multiple files together into an archive so I can transfer them as if they're a single file. However, sometimes you just need to go and compress a single file and the way we can do that is with the compress option. So if we go and run arc compress and then pass in the name of the input file. So once again, let's just use the test file because that's what we've been using the entire time. And then we can go and pass in the output file names. So like with the archive option, this will actually go and determine what the compression type is. So let's go and do say BZ2. Now in the case of BZ2, if you go and run this, it's not going to work. So let's just go and delete that file. So test file dot BZ2 because by default, the compression level will be set to negative one, which is too low to actually run. So let's go and run that again, but this time pass in the dash level option, and the dash level option will let us set the compression level. So let's go and set the compression level to one, and that's going to go and work. So if we go into here and then go down to the test file.bz2, as we'll see, the file is now being compressed. But there is a shorthand way of doing this as well. So instead of including the output file name, let's instead just go and include the output file type. And what this is going to do is take the input file name and then just stick the extension on the end. Let's go and run this and go back into LF, go down to the test file dot bz2 and as we can see it's the exact same file and then as you might expect you can do the same in reverse by using the decompress option so arc then decompress pass in the input file so test file dot bz2 and then pass in the output place so in this case output slash test file and if we go into the output directory now and do an ls as we can see we have the test file right here open that up in something like vim and I ran the wrong file. Let's try that again. Open up the uh, <laughs> the output file in something like Vim, and we have the same data. If you'd like to see a full list of the compression types, because they're not actually in the help page, I'd recommend going over to the GitHub, and as we can see, we have them all here. So BR, BZ2, ZIP, GZ, LZ4, SZ, XZ, and ZSTD. So I think this is an incredibly useful tool, because... I honestly never bother actually remembering the options that I need for things like tar and tar bz2. I could always just go and make some shell aliases. That is probably the next best solution, but I think this is a pretty useful tool if you're just way too lazy to go and do that and just want something that just magically works out of the box. 
So I think that's going to be everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pity, Tony, Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, then the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, Libre Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.